Hi everyone, this is Kristen and today I'm here with a quick unboxing video of my brand new iPhone 11 in green. So excited to see this new color of iPhone. I've been really wondering what color it actually is because in some pictures it looks green in other pictures, it looks kind of like a very light blue color. So really interested to see how this actually looks in person. Let's get this unboxed and check it out. I decided to go with 128 gig size, just as I did last year with the iPhone XR. You only have to pay $50 more and you get twice as much storage. Really a no-brainer in my opinion. This is my favorite part. The anticipation is nearly killing me. And wow, such a pretty phone. This is really a nice color. I think that I made the right choice going with the green. Really excited now, although I don't know, it looks kind of bluish to me. Let's look at what else we have in the box. Not really expecting any surprises here. We've got a little packet of information about the phone, all the regulatory information, etc. Setting that aside, we have wired ear pods. These have a lightning connector, and if you notice, since last year they stopped including that nice little adapter thingy, which I think is really unfortunate because I still have lots of headphones that need to have the lightning adapter, and they don't provide it in the box anymore. So really kind of disappointed with that, but other than that, these are reasonably functional, and it's nice to have another pair. Finally, on the somewhat disappointing but not exactly surprising side, we have our standard Apple 5 watt charger and accompanying lightning cable. So this is the same 5 watt charger that Apple has been shipping its iPhones with for years. The only thing that I can say which is particularly good about this is that it is small for travel, so it's not going to take up much space in your bag. However, it's not going to give you very fast charging, not like the 18 watt fast charger that is shipping with the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. However, given the price differential between the 11 and 11 Pro of $300, you can buy a lot of fast chargers, so keep that in mind. Moving on to the phone itself, note we only have a single piece of protective plastic on here on the front rather than one on the front and one on the back. Not sure whether this is because the iPhone 11's back glass is that much tougher than on previous year models or because Apple is being eco-conscious and trying to reduce plastic, but just something to note. And for those of you that may be curious about the sticker here on the front of the phone, this is here because I purchased the phone at an Apple store in Shanghai, and that's how they come packaged. Comparing the color of the actual green iPhone with the picture on the box, I have to say they are close, but not quite the same. The one on the box has a little bit more of a yellow tone to it, definitely greener looking than the actual iPhone, which I think has just a bit more of a blue touch to it. Maybe you could call this a light teal color or perhaps a blue green of some sort. I think that it is a fabulous color, looks absolutely wonderful on the iPhone, but I would not say that this is a straight up green. Not a bad thing, mind you. I still think it's a wonderful color. Just be aware that it's perhaps not exactly as pictured by Apple. So looking at the back of the phone, I think that the color on here looks absolutely lovely on the iPhone 11. Again, I think that this is more of a blue green than an actual green, but I don't care. I think it's just a beautiful color. We've got some color matched aluminum sides on here and a glossy glass back. This does not have the matte glass back you're going to get with the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max, although the area here for the infamous camera bump is a matte glass as opposed to the glossy glass on the rest of the back. So speaking of the camera bump, it really does not stick up very much at all. I think that the camera here actually looks pretty good. You've got color matched aluminum here that goes around the actual camera lenses here. This is one solid piece of glass with the camera bump and the rest of the back. Although, as I said, we do have some different types of glass here with this being a matte finish glass here and then glossy for the rest of the back. Overall, this is an interesting looking design and I just think it looks lovely. This is also supposed to be the toughest glass on a smartphone according to Apple. I don't think that there's been any kind of drop test or impact test with it yet but I'm sure that those will be coming out soon but overall this definitely feels like a well-made foam although of course I'm going to put it in a case and as I am a case reviewer primarily please subscribe if you want to see a lot of great upcoming cases for 11 and for the 11 Pro which I'm going to be unboxing later. 
Looking at the iPhone 11 side by side with last year's iPhone 10R, there are some immediately obvious differences. The first thing that's going to jump out at most people is going to be the cameras, obviously. We have two cameras and an infamous camera bump on the iPhone 11 as opposed to the single camera on the iPhone 10R. I am really excited about having two cameras on the iPhone 11. I had the 10R and 10S Max last year, and I found that although I love the iPhone 10R overall, the fact that it only had a single camera on the back was definitely limiting as far as photography was concerned. So I'm really excited about the fact that we've got two cameras on the iPhone 11. These also stick out a lot less than you might think. You might think it's a super obvious thing, but when you compare it side by side with your iPhone 10R, you can see actually they jut out less, even with the camera bump taken into consideration. Overall, I think it's definitely less obtrusive. Other obvious differences between the two phones would be the Apple logo, which is now centered in the iPhone 11 as opposed to being higher up on the iPhone XR, and we no longer have the word iPhone written on the iPhone 11. It has simply disappeared. So overall, you have a much cleaner look on the back of the iPhone 11, in my opinion, than on the iPhone XR. Thickness-wise, these are basically the same. I think that the iPhone 11, as far as specs are concerned, is very, very slightly thicker, but honestly, it's not anything that you're going to be able to notice with the naked eye. They feel the same to me. There's definitely the same height and the same width. So overall, size-wise, you're not really seeing a difference here, but I think in performance, you're definitely going to get better performance with the iPhone 11, even though the iPhone XR is unquestionably a great phone. As I said, I'm very excited about the new dual cameras on the iPhone 11. I think that these are going to bring huge improvements to photography on the 11 as compared to the iPhone 10R. The iPhone 10R did a good job considering it only had a single camera on the back, but it did not do portrait mode very well. It only allowed you to take pictures in portrait mode of people as opposed to pets and inanimate objects as well. You are now able to do pet portrait photos with the iPhone 11, which I think is huge. I'll be able to go back to taking portrait mode photos of my cats and overall I think that you're going to have a lot of other improvements as well. You have a new ultra wide lens in addition to a wide lens on here so that's going to give you a lot more flexibility in taking photos and you have a new night mode and I've seen great pictures come out of that so very excited to try that out here with this phone. So I think there are a lot of huge improvements with the iPhone 11. The most obvious differences between iPhone 11 and iPhone 10 R are on the back. When you look at this from the front, you'll see it looks basically the same. We have the same screen. It's an LCD screen and not an OLED. You have the same size bezel, same size notch, etc. There are, however, some hidden improvements. You've got better face ID with the iPhone 11, at least supposedly. I haven't gotten a chance to try it out, but I'm eager to. We also have an improved front camera. This is a 12 megapixel camera camera now and it has a number of enhancements including slow motion selfies called Slowfies by Apple as well as perhaps the more useful ability to go to a wide angle selfie mode when held in landscape mode as opposed to portrait mode. So I think that that is definitely an improvement. Overall this has greater water resistance as well as supposed greater impact resistance as well. It's got twice the water resistance of the iPhone 10R. 10R had 30 30 minutes for 1 meter. This has 30 minutes for 2 meters. Still not as good as the Pro Series, which has bumped its water resistance up to 4 meter depth for 30 minutes, but still really quite impressive. And overall, just a very nice and very competent phone by Apple. I love the look and feel. I think that the 11 is a great size, very pocketable, but still gives you a nice big screen. And I have to say, really crazy about this new green color. Personally, I think it's a blue green, but let's keep on calling calling it green because that's Apple's name for it. Overall, just a lovely phone and a very functional phone as well. It's $300 cheaper than the iPhone 11 Pro and it gives you really quite a lot of functionality as well. So overall, lots to love about the iPhone 11. Let me know what you think about this phone and about the color. Do you think it's green? Do you think it's blue green? What do you think it is? I'd love to know. Please put your responses in the comments. And if you are going to be upgrading to the 11 or the 11 Pro, I have lots more case and other accessory reviews yet to come, so please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Again, this is Kristen from The Tech Reviewer, and this has been my unboxing of the iPhone 11 in green. Thanks so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.